Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we're back for another brand new video. We actually need to start off today's video with a bit of a sobering tone as I have to look you directly in the eyes whether you're old or young, happy or mad and give you a warning through today's video. Not a trigger warning, if you will, or an extent it actually is because depending on the length of this video, whether you watch half of it or you watch the full thing, you will hear two words that separately are perfectly fine and accepted throughout the land, but when they are joined together, it creates the most horrifying, terrifying combination in Scottish football, and that's of course, Rugby Park. Aye, that's right, troops, it's that time again, and honestly, there could be an argument we made this game versus this team on that park versus that manager, at this point of the season is about as tough as it gets and this game right here will have a massive say on who's sitting tippity top of the league when it's all said and done this season. There is a lot riding on this game but before we get into the Rangers then we discuss that fully as always let's pump the brakes a little bit, take a breather. Hit the like button if you didn't mind, by the way, that'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you about subscribing if you enjoy the channel, but let's, more importantly, spend the next couple of minutes looking at tomorrow's dance partner and the true test that we actually face. And at my current time of recording, Kilmarnock set fourth in the old SPFL. And it's funny, right, because you say that fourth in the old SPFL and if you just looked at it and you just glance, you don't pay much attention to this league or the history of this league or rivalries or teams record against each other, you would look at this game saying, right, we're now playing the fourth team that's 11 points worse off than the team sitting third that we just absolutely dismantled 5 nothing. At Ibrox, there is absolutely nothing to worry about. It should be a foregone conclusion on how easy this game would be. But Scottish football, for what it is, ladies and gentlemen, has its perks, has its nice points, it has its pros, but it's also got its cons and it's also got its worries and... That's Rugby Park. Now, we've been doing this a long time, and I know there is some people that don't like talking about the park, and they don't like to talk about the surface. They don't like talking about that, and I completely understand, but honestly, I wouldn't be doing my job sitting here looking you in the eyes, or if you watch people that's actually good at their job a lot better than me, you cannot talk about this upcoming fixture without mentioning the old park, because since we returned to the top of the SPFL, we have played 12 games at Rugby Park. I'm looking you right in the eyes right now. Out of 12 games, how many games do you think Rangers has actually won. I'll give you a couple seconds or possibly pause to this video and go ahead and fire in your guess. Out of 12, Rangers Football Club, since we've returned to the top flight of the SPFL, how many? Well, if you're waiting for the answer, get ready and prepare the ticker because it is simply four wins out of the 12. If that there isn't it scary to you if that doesn't put a wee hair at the back of your neck? I don't know what else actually will because it's not as if we've been going to a difficult away day and getting a draw and winning our home games and everything like that. You know what I mean? It's not that way at all. It's no four wins and eight draws. Nah, nah. It's four wins, three draws and five losses, ladies and gentlemen. Meaning that besides Park Heat, Rugby Park is the only stadium in the top flight of Scottish football that we have lost in more than we've actually won in since we returned to the top flight. That there is why we mention it. And what's even crazier is we know how difficult a place to park here. We've seen so many good sides go to park here and struggle and get the wins and everything like that. Well, there is only one win separating park here in Rugby Park to us since 2016-17 season. That's crazy. I don't know what it is, ladies and gentlemen. Is it a bit of we do play down to the opposition? Is it is the Plastic Park debate? Or is there a wee bit of Space Jam Michael secret stuff going on where mentally we just go into a place thinking it's going to be hard and end up again playing down to the opposition and getting stuck in silly battles and not playing our game and throwing games away. There is a discussion there because there is no other stadium like it besides Park Heed, but with how much finances and everything that Celtics go, you're expecting that. You're not really when you look at the packet of Chris budget that Derek's got. And I, as I said, I'm not going to sit and talk about the park because we're not just going up there and playing the wee tiny black balls that's in amongst the plastic. Nah, nah, we're actually playing at a good Kilmarnock side. And I feel like it's just as the service to sit here and talk about plastic here, there, and everywhere. Derek has built a very, very good side, a very athletic defence that's fast, that's strong, that puts himself about, doesn't get beat in easy situations. And they've actually sprinkled themselves in with players that for this leak 
can change games and win games. I'm talking about the David Watsons. I'm talking about the Matty Kennedys. I'm talking about the Danny Armstrongs. They impact games for Kilmarnock quite a lot. And then you've got like maybe the clickbait names you're probably expecting me to mention. The likes of Greggy Stewart. Love 55 legend, Mr. Greg Stewart. The Indian League Messi, if you will. And obviously Van Veen, who some people, and I disagreed with it, and I'm not going to go too much into it, but some people want Van Veen to come to us in January. Nah, nah. For me, but you've got them too. And I think the best thing you could say about this Kilmarnock side and how good this Kilmarnock side actually is, is both Greg Stewart and Van Veen are in nailed on starters, you know what I mean? They've got Fissel, they've got Marley Watkins up there and they run ragged, they run defences ragged, they rile them up and then Greggy Stewart comes in, then Van Veen is coming in. This is a very, very well-oiled well -oiled machine and I know their league position maybe doesn't necessarily suggest it right now or the points total, but I think if you look at them right now, I'd argue player for player, this is probably the best Kilmarnock side. It's up there with obviously Stevie Clark's side that finished second, if you will. But I'm going back to like the Naismiths and the Boyd Kilmarnock. I'm going back to there. In terms of danger, when you look at them in a one-off game scenario, this is a good side, ladies and gentlemen. And they've certainly shown it. And I mentioned a one-game type scenario and everything like that because they're almost giant killers if you actually look at it because they'll have the silly results where they throw games away and you're sitting saying, how is them? To be fair, they've not done that in a very, very long time. In fact, they've only lost twice since early December. Once, obviously, versus us when we scanted them 3-1 in January. Very much appreciate that. Can we roll that right back? But you go that and you look at the record recently, it's been pretty damn good. But against the old firm this season, they've been absolutely ridiculous as they've played the old firm six times coming in to tomorrow's game. Do you know how many they've lost? A team with that budget, do you know how many they've lost? Two. Now, granted, it does need to be said we've only played them twice so far this season, so the large majority of that has been beating Celtic, which we also appreciate, or taking points of Celtic. But even that, right, we've played them twice. We got Beal Ball Mania in the first game of the season when everyone was terrified, and I think we were proven right. And you know what I mean? All my morning in pre-season about the team not looking right, we could feel it, we could see it, and aye, it did not look good. But then, we obviously played them in January, as we've mentioned, we beat them 3-1. Very enjoyable, that. And their only other loss was, again, at Park Heed. If you look at their record at home versus the Old Firm, they've played the Old Firm three times at Rugby Park. They've won all three. Something truly has to give. Someone's record is taking a blemish. Sahan needs to actually happen. Kilmarnock's 100% win ratio versus the Old Firm at Rugby Park is on stake and our quest, our journey, our story following Phil Claymont is taking us right there and at stake as well as we need to just keep winning and doing our job. Keep winning and doing our job. But in terms of Kilmarnock, I've been accused of talking up oppositions and everything like that in this league. I think you're up against a very, very good side. They work hard for each other. Clearly work for each other. You'll never see one of them turn around and going on a huff or anything like that. No, they run, they run, they run. They run themselves out the ground. Happy come off in the 60th minute because there's other runners coming on the actual part. They're probably the quintessential SPFL club when you actually think of it. Big, physical, strong, dangerous for set pieces. But honestly, they've got more than that. They've got real talent. And ah, it's going to be an interesting game. And so I give respect to the opposition. I'm not sitting here taking the mick or anything like that. Give them the respect. But as we transition over to the Rangers then, right, and we wipe the way the Kilmarnock players, I will need to pay a wee bit of respect to us as well because we've looked at everything. The record's horrible at Rugby Park. Their record this season has been sessional. There's a lot to actually make you feel sick to your stomach. But again, the faith I have in this ball day Belgian is absolutely outrageous because we can keep looking at history, we can keep looking at statistics, we keep looking and comparing the last time we went to Rugby Park, but it was night and day, the difference. We came through it for a pre-season when we went to Rugby Park under Bale, no known. Who was good, what style of formation was, and then we had players went on the park, no known. Who was good and what the formation actually was. It's hard to go back and really try and make a comparison to where we are now, to where we were with the last time we went to Rugby Park because it's truly night and day and for me we're a completely different team and I'd argue with the way we're winning, the way we're playing in games, the way we're built up 
we're a completely different animal. And I always find myself in this difficult situation, especially when we're playing this way and we're looking this way and we're looking this sharp and we're doing so well that I need to look here and I try not to sound dismissive and I try not to sound egotistical when I talk about my team because there's no point in being ever overconfident. We're Rangers fans, we've had some good highs, we've had some really bad lows, we know how this goes and we know what usually happens when we start getting a wee bit too excited and everything like that, but we can be... Um, impressed with how Kilmarnock's been playing. We can praise a Kilmarnock, but at the same time, when you look at your team compared to theirs, I think your team's just better in every single circumstances, and I think they should be better with what we've got available, and I think what Claymont's added into what he's rejuvenated is significantly better. So if you put them both out there, and if we didn't get caught in and lose our head and start playing their ball and start getting frustrated that we can't zip it about as normal, if we can just adjust the same way we adjusted to the cow field, versus St. Johnson, it's not going to be a bowling green and I think we all need to realise that going in to tomorrow's game, this surface is a disgrace, Kilmarnock to be fair to them are ripping up very very soon and gone grass, thank God for all that and everything like that right, but it's not going to be perfect Demora, but the players need to be alright with that as that as well and that's what used to worry me because every away day was difficult to actually watch these Rangers fans, eh, Rangers players I should say right, because Ibrox would be playing on a bowling green, they could zip a boot, they could play with a chest out, it's not, it was great, but then we would go to McDermott Park, then we would go to Petaudry, then we would go to the likes of Rugby Park, the Tony Macaroni, and the players would be sitting there like PDSD on freaking hell divers. but I just feel like the mentality switch is different, and I feel like Clement prepares the team actually better as we're going to places knowing it's alright, it's not going to be a 5-0 scanting the same way. It just can't be on that actual surface, but we didn't panic now. We stick to the game plan, and I think if we can do that, we can do the job the more and get what's done is there's an entire fan base craving this game, ladies and gentlemen, waiting for this game, praying about this game. And I'll tell you something, it's no Kelly fans, and it's no us, ladies and gentlemen. So do your job, quiet, scare, and terrify everybody else. That would be lovely. And one of the major differences, I think, from where we are now to where we've been over the last couple, not only just the last visit, but the last couple of years, and why we've maybe struggled is we've constantly tried to overplay and we've been so built in to play one way and one style and one way of going about our business. When we've not been able to do it on that park, we just play the same thing and it gets worse and worse and it gets dragged down, frustrated, and we end up losing our mind and losing the actual game. I feel like Clement has not got a set style of playing. I think he looks and identifies where teams are weak, where teams are there, what player I can put in here, who am I going to rotate for this one. So that excites me a lot going into this game. And I think our ability now to score from range drastically changes this game because Kamara can't kind of just part the bus. Well, they will part the bus tomorrow, if we're being honest. But I'm talking about they'll just set everybody in their box and just wait for the crosses out wide for Tavernier and Barisic, Tavernier and Barisic. Ta they can't even work on that. They've got to come out. They've got to close the Diamandes. They've got to get close to Oscar Cortez now. They've got to close in on Tav because Tav doesn't run down the wing anymore and cross it. No, he's cutting back there looking for the actual shot. Lunny will be there to try and fill there. So there's different questions that need to be answered. We are not the easiest team to scout anymore. And I just hope tomorrow is a perfect representation for that because that will be the biggest oh my, we are actually a completely different side if we go to a place that, again, historically we've been dreadful in, awful in, if we can come away with all three points. It's massive, I can't put it any more than that, but do I believe in my team? Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen. I think the likes of Mo will be massive in this game. I think Oscar's going to have a game that's just been sucking in the back of my mind, and personally, I know it's going to maybe annoy people, but if you're talking about a striker, I think we need the Mora. It's no Fabio, love the boy. Wouldn't be surprised if he started, but I think if there's ever a game to suit big Desers, it's this one, the more, and I think Desers, with his attributes and his experience, if you will, or the Desers experience, could get us over a line at a difficult venue, so that's where I'm going with that one, ladies and gentlemen, and regarding the actual team news, there's been no fresh injuries, the squad is fine, which is just amazing to actually hear, Kamal Roof won't be available and Danny Panic or anything like that, again, he's just managing these players properly, he's been doing the same with Lawrence, he's been doing the same with Jacko, and Kamal Roof actually played yesterday for the for the youth team as well, and ended up bagging a goal and everything like that, so it's just good management, I like this one, we're just throwing people in to the deep end, we just seem to have a true manager now, and maybe it's the fact that I don't trust it, or I'm so 
used to getting hurt by that, but I just look at my manager, I trust him to make the right decisions. Now it's about the players to go out there in the park, get over whatever is in here about this stadium. Don't even talk about it. Just realise it's going to be a difficult day and be all right with that. We need people to step up and that's what I want to see tomorrow. What be you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below. I'm going to go with a scoreline I've never, and I checked this, it took me a long time as we've been doing this a very, very long time. I'm going to go with Rangers 2, Kamarnock 0. I've never ever, it's always 2-1 at Rugby Park. I know, it's almost like I always just go for that channel favourite. But that's what I'm going to go with. Dessel's the difference and that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, until tomorrow's game, hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. I've been Sage 92 Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.